all of these animals belong to the Dallas Fort Worth Zoo? The Fort Worth Zoo. Fort Worth Zoo. Uh, okay. Fort Worth Zoo, right? And they're here so we can produce the babies yep. and hopefully repopulate this island. That is going to be amazing. Do you feel stressed having known that you've got a high percentage of these and they're in your trust? You know what Absolutely. I mean? Absolutely. I am. <laughs> I, I feel uh, yeah, a lot of responsibility. Uh, how cool is this, man? It is not a tree. It's actually uh, been sculpted. We are inside the Anagata enclosure at Iguana Land. I am with my good friend, Ty Park. Hey, it's Ty. been a little while, Ty. Um, he called me up last week and said, what, you don't love me anymore? <laughs> I'm like, I didn't, I didn't, this guy is so busy and we're gonna show you just what he's up to. But what I wanted to do today, Ty, is really talk about, you know, in the past when we've come here, you've explained how you got into reptiles and iguanas and what you wanted to accomplish. It's about conservation, and no iguana in the United States needs conservation uh, more than rock iguanas, and this one in particular, the Anagata. Say it again, I always say it wrong. Anagata, Anagata, Anagata. Anagata. All right. We sincerely thank all of you happy campers out there. Your support makes a real difference in our efforts here at Camp Kennedy. This week's special shout out goes to Joe and Carrie Hathaway. Thank you for all you do and for loving reptiles. All right, penguins. I know it's the Latin is penguins. Right, right. cyclo penguins. Okay. Right, they come from British Virgin Island. Okay. Right. Matter of fact, Sir Richard Branson had a bunch of them in his on his private island. Oh, yeah. Exactly. No way. Like, look at guys. Look at this iguana. So this is a cyclora. And we know it's a cyclora iguana because when we look at the dorsal crest on that animal, there is a, a nuchal break in the, in the spines. And on the tail also, oh, she's tough too. Don't get sorry, too close, Tom. Yeah, sorry, buddy. Yeah. Yeah. Tom's back. I'm happy to have Tom. There he is. Uh, and you can see the break right there where the tail uh, spines meet the body spine. So that's one of the ways. And of course, the circular tail, which is what cyclora means. Mm -hmm. So tell me about this species. Why is this such a big deal for one land to have these animals? Okay, so um, this is, for me, this is kind of like a pillar of what uh, conservation is all about, right? Okay. Um, I've been breeding rock iguanas for 14 years now. Okay. I've been producing about 700 babies every year. Cuban, and, rhino, you know, blues. Oh, oh. Right, exactly. <clears throat> and uh, so it's like, uh, I have actually six species here now. Amazing. Um, but this species is, um, basically there's only 12 in the whole USA, right? That's incredible. All right, so they're all owned by Fort Worth Zoo. Okay. Okay. And um, Mike, the director at Fort Worth Zoo, was, I don't know, I mean, <laughs> I think this man is, he does things that is the right thing to do. Right. right? It's not about politics, right? He's going to do things that's what, right for the animal. Okay. Okay. And uh, we became <clears throat> friends, and he decided that since I know how to breed rock iguanas, I produce 700 babies every year, that I be the person who should um, have these animals and breed them. Eventually, we want to release them into an island where they used to occur, now okay. they're extinct. Okay. So this is really, um, I'm just honored to be part of that. You and know? knowing you and being of similar spirit, um, if you can repatriate an animal, it is one of the greatest accomplishments in conservation. That's the right. goal. Yeah. So this is a historically these animals haven't been found on this island for right around five thousand years. Is that That's, right? Yeah, about five thousand years. They've they've been extinct on this island, and they all the scientists have decided that this is a perfect uh, place for us to reintroduce this perfect. animal. Right. Um, yeah. It's also U.S. <laughs> territory. Okay, fantastic. Right. So there's protection right. in place. Exactly. So uh, that's our plan. Uh, of course, I have to produce them first. You have first. to produce the animals. So we're looking at a female right now. Here, Tom, I'm going to grab this. I know yeah. you like being the camera guy, but I want to show everyone just how beautiful. There's really, um, you know, rock iguanas aren't necessarily the most colorful uh, iguanas, but what we like about them, or at least what I like about them, they're very robust. 
they have incredible personalities and you know they are just i always say it guys you probably heard me say it a million times they're like the weightlifters of the reptile world they're so buff they're like pit bulls here she is she's so tough you see she's flaring up there look at the even though there's no spines on top of her kind of crest there i just like how pronounced it is and this is her talking to me she's saying hey man I'm not comfortable with this thing. Uh, why don't you come back over here where I can, you're not behind me. So she's showing me her do lab. She's just, but beautiful scales. I wanted to just show you those scales. So there is some coloration. It's like a light color, but she's really beautiful, man. Yeah, um, the blue will come out more yeah, in the summertime yeah. and stuff. Right. Uh, but I think that muted color is amazing. Yeah. They're just magnificent animal, right? right I mean, right. The, the shape. And the personality, personality is just amazing. Yeah. They're not really sure you find them in the wild, they're gonna flee, but they're pretty confident animals. Yeah, right? well, it, 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 correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe that most of the cyclora that were found on the islands mm -hmm. in, the, in the West Indies, in the Caribbean mm -hmm. islands, mm -hmm. they were the largest land animals on those islands. Is that correct? That is correct. Yeah, yeah. so that means that they, you know, they have this built in like, hey, we yeah. were the biggest ones. Exactly. So what was the right. big problem? When Europeans came, what did we do, <laughs> man? What did I, the, I, it wasn't my fault, but my ancestors came with goats, cats, exactly. and dogs. Exactly, all right. I mean, that's the story of, of most places now, yeah. right? I mean, yeah. And the one other thing that I've done, see the running water? Right, I like this. <laughs> yeah, this is a this is cool. So you just so guys, I'm gonna go ahead and show you what's going on. Whenever we come to a new um, zoo or facility, um, you get a bunch of ideas, and that's how you learn. You just see how everyone else does things. And Ty was like, well, what happens if I have this thing filled up with water? They lay in the water and they poop in their water. All of water is tortoises. Everyone does that. But what he decided is like, you know what? Why don't I just leave? a little trickle because he always left the trickle anyway to, to clean out the water now this animal is going to be stimulated when it's thirsty it's stimulated to walk over and just lap at this little water fountain exactly. and they can no longer poop in their water so they're getting clean water at all times um, many iguanas and lizards in general are precipitation based drinkers when it rains, mm -hmm. that's when they're stimulated because these guys live on a, we're inside a beautiful enclosure, by the way. It's almost, I would say, uh, you know, some of the islands are very dry. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. so it's almost, it's, I wouldn't say true desert, mm -hmm. but it's a very dry environment. You know, we've got sand mixed in right. with dry right. bark, beautiful rock work, this beautiful, um, you know, log that's laying down. So they don't find a lot of standing water. Correct. So it's right. going to be when it rains. Exactly. So and then do sometimes from the That's right. Do drop drinkers as well. Oh. So really well done. Now you have four of these animals here. Correct. Two, two males and two females and we are supposed to get three more. Okay. So they are really relying on Iguana Land to produce these animals. So well, we could do you think we could go check out one of the males and show everyone what the males look like? Let's do it. All right. We're going to go check out a male. Stay with us. What should we do? Uh, yeah, we'll just walk around and check these guys out. This is so cool. So we're inside one of his breeding pens. And these enclosures you made years ago, and specifically because you wanted to save the money on the enclosures <laughs> so that you could put it back into the conservation. Yeah. yeah. Um, one of the thing that I decided to do when I, you know, decided that I wanted to do conservation work with the rock iguana, I had to figure out, am I going to have money left over at the end of the year to give to conservation, right? Okay. So the thing that, you know, the, the, the there's certain things you can't crimp on, which is like feeding them points. Of course, right? yeah, you gotta feed them the right diets. Right, right, right now we're going to about $6,000 in greens alone. $6,000 in greens alone to feed right, all the animals. Right, produce and stuff. And that then include the, you know, the pellets and stuff that we, we add, right? Wow. So, um, it, it's there's a pretty good uh, you know chunk of capital right <laughs> oh my uh, gosh, yearly. Yes. and of course there's electricity and stuff like that so for me to have uh, a a breeding farm that can contribute to conservation work you gotta figure out where you're gonna cut corner at gotcha and so it's not feeding it's not the employees it's literally where how you gonna build this cage. Gotcha, so, and so. that's what you did. It's really cool, and we've seen that before. Like you just used the, the sheet metal or the corrugated roofing, right. some chicken wire. But what's really cool about this, guys, is the space. When right. you're breeding animals, especially cyclora, 
They right. need space, don't they, Ty? Exactly. So this is 20 feet by 10 feet, right? Okay, so I'm sitting on a high box that has heater in it. That's a 100 watt heat emitter under there. Okay. And there's two area for them to lay eggs in, right? Right there and right there. I typically have one male and two female in these enclosures. Really? Okay, right? cool. Uh -huh. So you notice that visually they're divided by this high. So yes. that they, one female lay there, one female lay there, and they're kind of protective of their nest anyway. Yes, that's really smart. That's something that I'm glad you mentioned that because a lot of people make the mistake of not having what's called visual barriers, even the branches. Right. And you know, right. he was hiding under this because just like human beings, sometimes you just want to get away from everyone. Exactly and and right. in this situation, the male, which we're looking at now, gorgeous animal. I mean, you know, you can really tell the hump, the crest on the back is much more pronounced big jowls and overall larger body um you know sometimes uh and in my opinion sometimes these uh females especially when they're protecting their nest they can be very very uh tough animals to the right. males absolutely and yeah. they are they're they're for small bodied animal they could beat up the male during after they lay egg they're very protective no one messes right. with a mother and their baby exactly man. so this, you, this guy's actually quite tame you can hold of him. course. Oh my gosh, Ty, I, man, this is really cool. <laughs> yeah. What's his name? His name is Gus. All right. right. And the female's name is Nova. Okay. Okay. Um, I believe this one is 36 years old. 36 years yeah, old. Yeah, it's one of the founding uh, member uh, uh, of an Agata Iguana that came to US. So no way. Oh yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know you're a tough dude, aren't you? That's yeah. so amazing. So one of the yeah. founding members, and uh, these all all of these animals belong to the Dallas Fort Worth Zoo. The Fort Worth Zoo. Fort Worth Zoo. Well, okay. Fort Worth Zoo, right? And um, they're here so we could produce the babies yep. and hopefully repopulate this island. That is going to be amazing. What an amazing uh, story to, to Do you feel you stress having knowing that you've got a high percentage of these and they're in your trust? You know what Absolutely. I mean? Absolutely. I yeah. am. I, I feel uh, yeah a lot of responsibility for right. these guys. And right. um, and um, you know it's 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 it's, it's a very big challenge, right? Yeah. And as you know, animal that doesn't belong to you. It, it's the animal that you really really have to be careful because you know it belongs to someone else right you know animals that belong to me I'm more relaxed with them gotcha. animal that belong to others I am on it yeah you know, because gotcha. I, I don't want them you know getting hurt or yeah you know so because that doesn't belong to me you know I understand and now not to mention that these and look at the colors of those spines on the tail top there is some blue in there oh beautiful. wow <laughs> holy smokes I'm colorblind everyone knows it but I can see that is a gorgeous, gorgeous animal. But yeah, these animals have a story. Hopefully Ty will be writing his name into the story of this animal's conservation and reintroduction, repatriation into that island. So guys, I love coming to visit my buddy Ty. I hope you guys enjoyed this little look into the uh, Cyclorapingus or Anangata. Anangata. Anangata, I, I, one of those <laughs> names. I'm gonna have a hard okay. time with it. Um, Hopefully we'll have some more news for this and maybe in a couple of years we'll be coming back doing a follow-up where we can see some babies ties produced. That would be great, huh? Yeah, great. Awesome. And then Tom, thank guys. Yeah, really you're the best, Ty. Guys. Thanks for having us here. We got some more videos coming from Ty's house, so don't worry. Look for them on the channel real soon. Don't forget to like and subscribe. That's a big old dung beetle right there uh, buzzing around my head. But anyway, we're going to just relax and watch this guy bob his head. See ya! Yeah, that's what's good about these guys. They are... So confident, they'll yeah. communicate with you. If they don't like you, they're gonna tell you. Tell you. Yeah. Uh, because this is their territory, right? Right. I mean, that's what I want. I don't want animals to flee from you, right? They're not as comfortable. 